Well, hello, hello. This is Rosa Rubio Giotta, RCG Creations. How you doing? We have a craft haul. It's a little one. And it's, look, where is it from? May May Made It. She also has a YouTube channel. And uh, I think she's on Facebook too, but I don't really don't know. But I think she is. But anyway, let's just get to what I got. Here I have 20 treat bags. Gonna be starting with getting myself ready for the holidays coming up. And then I got, oh yeah, this is great. Masking paper from Brutus Monroe. I love to do uh, make my own maskings. For those who don't know what a masking is, I just I'm actually just getting ready to do one. Okay, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. What you do is you um, put this on a piece of, and you definitely want it to be really thin, like copy paper, okay? Because if you if you use cardstock, the thickness of the cardstock keeps you from getting a level stamp, okay, when you're masking. So what you do is you put the uh, a plain piece of paper, copy, copy paper on top of one of these sheets. Let me open it up and I'll show you. Okay, and this is double-sided adhesive. But look how thin that those are. It's just like it's like a copy paper. But you gotta find a spot because this is like double-sided adhesive. Okay, this is the release paper, and this is the sticky stuff. So what you do is you put your copy paper on top of this sticky stuff. You take this release paper off, and you throw it away. Okay. And then you put, then you're going to stamp it. You definitely want to use, probably, more than likely you would want to use white. Because white's going to be legible. Then you're going to stamp this image on that item. Okay. Then you're going to fussy cut it. Here, I didn't do that because I forgot I had these. And I was saving this package for my video and I forgot I did it. But as you can see, this is just plain. Uh, what I like to do is whenever I'm printing something and it's a mess up or it's, I made too many pages, I just save these and I put them in a little folder and I keep track of them because it's just scratch paper. I use them for scratch paper when I write, want to do some samples or see some colors of something. I just keep them right here in my craft desk. Then you fussy cut all the way around the stamp. Well, the object in the masking paper is... It's a very low tack adhesive, just like the post-it note stuff. And you can use post-it notes too, you know, if you have those. But the object is, when you take this off, just like you do your sticky post-it notes, you can put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. Then what you do is you put it on... I'm trying to see if I have a card here. Oh, I don't have a card. But let me just show you this as an example. So this is going to be all fussy cut, okay? Then you're going to take your backing off, this backing off, okay? And then you're going to stick this onto so your card. Oh, what? I wish I had a card. Um, oh, you know what? I always have said cards. Bear with me. I'll be, I'll be right back. I'm going to bring a card because you need to see what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm back. I'm just making sure the recording comes on. Okay, so let's just pretend this, I just stamped this, which I did a long time ago. <laughs> okay, and then what you're going to do is, and pretend that this is already all cut out. Okay, so you're going to stick your stamp, your piece of white cardstock, onto your masking paper, and then you're going to peel off the, the release paper. And then you're going to fussy cut the whole thing. And on the back of this, once you uh, actually take that back, ta I'm sorry, take that back. Here's your piece of masking paper. And here's the white. Okay. You're going to put your white, take this off, put your white on top of it, throw this masking paper away. Okay. And on that white piece of paper, which let's just pretend this is a white piece of paper, then you're going to stamp it. And you can use a, a, a stamping block, or you can use a stamping tool, whatever you want to do, it doesn't really matter. Then you're going to stamp it. Then this is, so let's pretend this is all stamped out. 
Then you're going to fussy cut all the way around the whole thing. And as you can see, I, I used my uh, Zacto knife and I cut around in here on these little areas. Okay. So once you cut that, then at that time is when you take off the backing of the masking. Because this is like a two-sided process. The back of this is going to be all sticky. Okay. You want to use your masking uh, paper whenever you have a lot of delicate project like this. But if it's a something simple, like a simple little design like this, this is actually fairly simple other than the little hair. Uh, you know what? Just use your uh, your ATG gun or a um, uh, adhesive roller, either one, because you just need a little bit. The whole point, the whole purpose of this is this, pretend this is like a little horse, covers the stamped image. Then you can turn around because it's, it's, it's stuck to it. You can ink around here, and it's never going to mass damage the ma the part that's being masked, okay? But that's the main gist of it. I've got a couple of videos already. Look on my uh, channel uh, where I've showed you how to mask and how to do masking. But that's the reason why you want to get masking pa taper, because like your little um, sticky notes... And I, I get them from all over the place. We have some vendors that come to the office. And these are just sticky notes. And everybody's seen these little sticky notes. They come in different sizes. And you can all different kind. Bic makes these. Post-it makes these. See that? They're, and they're just sticky notes is all they are. Okay. A pad of sticky notes. This one's made by uh, Bobcat Spider Tack. So all kinds of people make them. Okay. The only you but you only want a little of this to be tacky, okay? That's that's why it's called a sticky note. But then you get the big ones like this one, and it's the same thing, but they're just a bigger paper. And I don't really care what any of this stuff is because all I worry about is the stamp image, and that's it, okay? And again, because it's a sticky note, like this one has already lost all its sticky. It's all lost. It's all its sticky. So there's nothing there. So I just get a pill. Once I've cut this out, like on this one, I'm just going to run my uh, roller here and then put it on here. Because I don't need the whole thing to be totally on here unless I'm going to be doing a lot of inking the background. Okay. And I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin the image itself. If I'm going to be doing a lot of inking, where I'm going to be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so like some of this delicate area, I would definitely want to make sure the sticky stuff is all in here. That's the whole purpose of using your masking paper, the big sheet like this. It's because this entire, when you use the whole sheet, all of this has masking adhesive on the back of it. That's really all it is, is low tack adhesive. That's all it is. So as you can see from the size, all this is low tack, but on these, when you buy these or get these for whatever, only bits and pieces, usually it's just one little strip that's a double ad adhesive. This doesn't have any adhesive on it. Sometimes this really works great, a lot of times it doesn't, and this is the reason why you want this or the bigger sheets of any masking paper. So that is why it's good to have this in your stash. So, well, hopefully you've got it. If not, just watch my other video and you'll know exactly how to do a masking and how it works. Okay. So, I'll put this back. And the next thing that I got... Oh, the little wobbles! I love it. Catch my other video. I did a wobble card. And stuff. But these are the little mini wobbles. And you get 12 of them. They're from Hampton Arts. But I was running low on those. And then, uh, oh, I love to get my backing of my earrings because how many times do we lose the backing of our earring and you lose it? And I have a bunch of backing, so I'm going to and order these so because I'm always losing my earrings. And especially now with the face masks that we're wearing, all of a sudden I realize, oh, I lost my earring. Or I have the front part, but I'm getting ready, but I lost the back part, and I don't know where it went. 
So this is a good way to replace the backing of your earrings. Or if you want to make your own earrings, which I used to do when I do my jewelry beading. I still do it, but I don't do it very often. And it, this allows you to make your own uh, bead earrings or jewelry, whatever. This is the EK Tools uh, embossing powder. I keep my hair around my little, I have a little... Uh, Recollections White um, Lazy Susan with a bunch of little dividers on it. And this is a good six or seven years old. And look, this is still the original powder that came when it came like this. And look at that. As you can see, it's pretty much the same as it really used because this powder goes a long way. But oh, look at this. After so much years, look at, the, look at that. It's all kind of beat up. And it's kind of, sometimes it is kind of hard, especially on delicate items. I want to put this on, and I, I do a lot of embossing. But I also like to put this on, like say I have a project that's it's got some sticky stuff and I can't get it off. I'll just put this over the sticky stuff, the sticky residue, and it uh, does, no, it's no longer sticky. The reason I'm gonna, I needed to buy another one is... Okay, come on. Boy, this is hard. <laughs> Not as easy as the other one. Okay. Let me get a towel. For some reason, I can't seem to open it up. Oh, that makes it worse. I need a piece of rubber. I need to get my hubby and say, Honey, open this up. Okay, I'm about to have him open it because I can't get it. I'll be back. Okay, I'm... Back. Hubby had to help me open these things up. For some reason, the brand new one really got stuck. Well, actually, that's the old. That's the old one. Here's the brand new one. Oh, I just was able to get it open. Okay, yeah, it's stuck. Okay, but that's the biggest the main. The main difference is real reason I bought a new one is because of the bristles. See how nice and together they are. This one's many years old. And stuff, then all you do is twist the bottom half off, and you can refill it with your own baby powder, or talcum, cornstarch, whatever it is that you have. And you can do that to refill it. So, this is always reusable. I try to find if there anybody knows that there's a way to where I can order just the tips alone. I would rather have just the tips, um, but I could never find where to order just the tips. I even went to EK Tools, and they don't have just to order the tip part only and it looks like it's a twist off so I would think it would work or you could just order that but see how that's moving see that and see where it's all sturdy here on the brand new one so I don't know if they're planning on doing that or not but anyway but that is the take on this uh, craft haul Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. Don't forget to like and share and comment. Take care. Bye-bye.